identifying slope and y-intercept part two. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify slope and y-intercept from, or I'm sorry, we're just going to find the slope from this table here. So anytime you see a table, just think of it as a bunch of points. It's the point 30 comma 1.5, the point 60 comma 3, and the point 90 comma 4.5. So whenever we're finding slope, the way I'd like you to do this is I would like you to pull out two points that you would want to use. So um, right now we kind of, we have to use the decimals because we only have one point that doesn't have decimals. So let's pull out the first point, 30 comma 1.5, and then the second point, 60 comma 3. Okay, so we're going to use our formula, which I forgot to give you. So back up here, um, m equals, so your slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you're given two points, you label them x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay, so once we've pulled our two points out, if you need to, go ahead and label them on the top if you get confused about what's what. And we're going to take y2 on the top, so 3 minus y1, so 1.5, and then on the bottom, we're going to have x2, which is 60, minus y2, which is 30. Okay, if you do 3 minus 1.5, you get 1.5. And 60 minus 30 is just 30. So if we then put that in our calculator and simplify it, we find out that our slope is 1 half. Okay, for this next table, we're going to do it the same way. Um, and looking at these dollars earned, they're 17, 25.5. I want to pick two points that maybe don't have decimals that might be easier to work with. So I'm going to pull out this first point and the third point. So 2, comma, 17 and 4, comma, 34. Now really, you could use any combination of these points. We have five points there to work with, and you can pick your two favorite. So, again, we're going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. And we're going to start with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we do that, we get 17 over 2, or 8.5. Okay, so here's this formula again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're going to find the slope given points. So now we don't have a table of points to pick from. We just have these points that are given to us. So we're going to start with y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 over 4 minus 5 is negative 1. If we simplify that, we just get a positive 3. All right, for B, we have y2, which is negative 1, minus y1, which is 5, all over x2 minus x1. Negative 5, or sorry, negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6, and 6 minus 3 is 3. Our final answer, if we divide that out, we get negative 2 as our slope. Okay, now for the last one, we're going to take y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus negative 2. Okay, be careful here because a lot of times people forget to bring this sign in. Oops, that's a negative 2 right there in that spot. So we're going to need to make sure that we put minus negative 2 in there. Okay, 4 minus 4 is 0. Anytime you have minus a negative, that just becomes one big plus sign. So 4 plus 2 here is 6. 0 divided into 6 parts is going to be 0. So for this one, our slope is 0. Remember, if the 0 is on the bottom, it's undefined because we can't divide by 0. Okay. Oops, sorry, I went back. Okay, given the points, um, this and this, find the slope of negative 3 and the value of x. Er, I'm sorry, in the slope of negative 3, find the value of x. So we're going to set this up all the same. Instead of a y here, I'm gonna, or instead of an x, I'm going to go ahead and put a y in here because that's the y spot. So let's change those to y's. 
doesn't really matter, but since it's the y coordinate, I figure we should make it a y. Okay, so we're going to do our formula the same way. We're going to take y2, which happens to just be y here, minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. This is going to equal negative 3 because it tells me that my slope is negative 3. Okay, so if I just start simplifying this, I'm going to eventually solve for y, but if I just start simplifying, I'm going to start here with 2 minus 3 because I can easily do that. So we have y minus 5 over negative 1, that's 2 minus 3, and equals negative 3. So now if I look on the left side in order to solve for y, I need to move the negative 1 first because the negative 1 is underneath all of the equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. I just get the y minus 5 on the left. I get a positive 3 on the right. Then I'm going to add 5 on both sides. I get y equals 8. Okay, a recording studio charges mus musicians an initial fee of $50 to record an album. Studio time costs an additional $35 an hour. Anytime you're doing word problems in this unit, I want you to think about which of these numbers happens just once and which one happens over and over again. In terms of slope and y-intercept, slope happens over and over, so it happens multiple times, and b, your y-intercept, happens only once. So in this case, the 50, it's an initial one-time fee, that's our b, and the 35, that's our m, because it happens every hour. Okay, part A says to write an equation that gives the total cost of an album as a function of studio time. So we pretty much have it done because we've already labeled our M and our B. It's going to be Y equals M is 35. You can use X or H. I'm going to use H for hours. 35H plus your B, which is 50. Okay, B says to find the total cost of recording an album that takes 10 hours. So I have 10. I'm going to plug it in for hours. So I get 35 times 10 plus 50. 35 times 10 is 350. 350 plus 50 is 400. So this is $400. That's the total time it, or total amount it would cost if you wanted 10 hours of studio time. All right, during a fundraiser, three students earn $75 and five students earn $125. In this situation, what's the independent variable? So here, our independent variable is the number of students because the number of students you have determines how much money they're going to spend. So your independent is number of students, and your dependent is how much money they, um, how much money they raise. So we'll put money. Okay, without graphing, tell whether the slope of the situation is positive or negative, zero or undefined. So if we go back up here to the initial problem, or the initial situation, I want you to notice that there's actually just two coordinate points hidden in here. Three students matches up with $75, and five students matches up with 125. So this is just the point 3, 75, and the point 5, 125. We can easily find our slope now, knowing that those two points are from the problem. So we're going to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, if we take that, we're going to get 50 over 2, which is 25, which is a positive slope. In order to get our units for 25, we'll just kind of talk about units for it too. Um, you just take the units of your y, so the units of this top part, per the units of the bottom part. So in this case, 25 and 75 were, was money, so it's going to be $25, it's money, per, on the bottom here, this 5 and the 3 were students, so $25 per student. That means each student raises $25. Okay, go ahead and pause your video, try these two independent practices, and then restart to watch me do it. All right, the rate of change from this table. Remember, you can pick any two of these points. I'm going to pick the points, um, let's see, I'm going to pick negative 2, 10, and I'm going to pick the negative 10, 50. 
Okay, so start off with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, it's going to be minus a negative 10. So we have two negative signs in there. 10 minus 50 is negative 40. This minus a negative becomes one big plus sign. And we get 8. Negative 2 plus 10 is 8. Negative 5 is our final answer. Okay, Zoe started a savings account with $300. After four weeks, she had $350 in her account. In nine weeks, she had $400 in her account. What's the rate of change of her bank account per week? So we're looking for the slope here. Now remember, we can find points in here. One point we have is four weeks and 350. So that's the point four comma 350. The other point is nine weeks, $400. And in fact, we even have a third point in here. Right here it said she started saving with 300. So that's actually week zero, $300. Okay, I'm gonna take the two points with the smaller numbers and I'm gonna find the slope using them. You could have also found the slope with these two, that's fine, and you would get the same answer as me. Okay, so 350 is my y2 minus my y1, which is 300, all over 4 minus 0. So we get 50 over 4, and then we're going to have, I'm sorry, not 4. Did I make a mistake? Okay, maybe I made a mistake in my key that I wrote down. So 50 over 4, which I don't have a calculator right now to divide. Let's see, I think that's 12.50. So with units, it's going to be dollars, because that's what this top part was. Dollars per week, because that's what the bottom part was. So dollars per week.